Pawn Stars is watched for a variety of reasons. For one thing, it's always interesting to see what's being pawned, as many of the goods brought in have interesting, if occasionally creepy, backstories. Another source of entertainment is the tension among the members of the world-famous Gold and Silver Pawn Shop team. Then there's also the thrill of negotiation, and of course, the pawn industry's scams, which have revealed the true faces of our reality stars. So in today's video, we'll show you some of the show's worst scams from the show. Treasure of Nevada. I got that from my grandfather when he died. Uh, he left a safe full of contents. Any other cool things in the safe? When the seller presented a golden coin to shop co-owner Rick Harrison. I'd like to sell this gold coin if I could. Okay. Rick immediately recognized it as a sort of coinage used in Peru during Spanish colonial authority. In the late 1600s and early 1700s, Spain possessed mines in Peru and forced the local populace to work as slaves in them, according to Rick. Golden coins from that era, according to him, are essentially money gained through slave labor. The coin's vendor was aware that it was potentially valuable, but he was unaware of its historical significance. Do you know much about this? I don't know much about it at all. Okay, I know a little bit about the coin. According to the seller, he discovered the coin in a safe he acquired after his grandfather died. Fortunately for him, his grandfather had preserved the coin in good shape in a plastic container. So my grandfather's gold coin. He kept it in plastic, so it's in really good shape. Um, which Rick noticed right once. Rick enlisted the help of a specialist in Spanish colonial coins to determine whether or not the piece was genuine citing a recent fake as his reason for his anxiety. He said that the coin was not only genuine, but also an excellent example. I'd say it's, it's absolutely genuine. Okay. Rick's Spanish colonial coin specialist rated the item at $18,000. I would put a price tag of 18,000 on it. Okay. As a result, when the seller and Rick resumed negotiations, the seller, understandably, began by asking for $18,000 following the value. Sounds like $18,000 to me. No, I don't. Rick responded with a $10,000 bet. Why would we give you ten grand for it? How about twelve? How about ten grand? After some haggling and a threat from the seller to walk away, the two agreed on a price of $11,000. I wouldn't take anything less than $11,000. <laughs> 11,000. 11,000. Okay. Get a All deal. Right. Thank All you. Right. Let's go do the paperwork. You got it. But the poor guy had no idea that he had been deceived by the famous reality personality. What a jerk! Rick was planning to make more money out of it. Everlasting Gobstoppers. In 2017, Rick Harrison paid a visit to a man named Dan who claimed to have some well preserved props from Gene Wilder's 1971 cult blockbuster, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Dan did not disappoint when he unveiled the merchandise, which he estimated to be worth $725,000. The Wonka hat Wilder wore on set a big golden egg. This is the golden egg. It's heavy. Many Wonka bars. Wonka bars. Those were they used on the set? Yeah, and they still haven't melted. <laughs> a genuine golden ticket. A golden ticket. A genuine screen used. And the crown jewel, the everlasting gobstopper, were among the many objects on display. Is it the everlasting gobstopper? Yeah. Harrison didn't care how he got the props, he just wanted them all now, especially the gobstopper. Despite his enthusiasm for each and every prop, Harrison determined that if he could only take one, it would be the gobstopper. Dan was hesitant to part with the collection, but he swiftly agreed to sell the prop for $100,000. Um, I'm gonna give you one price, and that's that. I, I gotta stick with $100,000 for the Gobstopper. A seemingly absurd price for what is essentially Technicolor plastic, but the wisest man enjoys a little folly now and again. Harrison was on the verge of agreeing, but he wanted one more thing to sweeten the deal. He was willing to pay $100,000 for the everlasting Gobstopper if Dan included a Waka Bar. If you throw in a Waka Bar. Harrison bargained Dan down to a total of $105,000 for the Gobstopper and the wooden bar. $105,000 and I get a Wonka bar. But Dan wanted an extra $15,000 for the prop. 
I'll tell you what, I would give you one Wonka bar and I'd give you the everlasting gobstopper for 115,000. But this time too, Rick got fooled because his cinephilia made him buy the gobstopper, which actually ranged from 20 to $40,000. I'm gonna miss that everlasting gobstopper. Sweet! You got a deal. It's like the fountain of youth. Melted down rare gold coins. How's How's something you might be interested in. What do you got? Take a look at this. I have a very old coin. Jennifer Beckman brought a collection into the shop in November 2013 that featured numerous rare pieces. For the collection, the guys paid her $12,375 across three trips. The problem was that the collection wasn't supposed to be Beckman's to sell. Beckman allegedly took the collection from her uncle, David Walters, who claimed to be the genuine owner of the collection. He didn't notice it was missing until after it was sold. According to Walters, the collection is worth $50,000. When Las Vegas cops attempted to seize the collection, world famous gold and silver told them the coins had already been melted down. A loophole in Nevada pawn shop legislation was the cause for the speedy turnaround. Non-jewelry coins are exempt from the requirement that objects sold to pawn shops be held for 30 to 90 days to allow the owner to claim them. Isaac Newton's book. How are you doing, son? Fine. What do we got here? This is a book that belonged to Isaac Newton. When Bob, a seller from season three, arrives into Gold and Silver Pawn with a copy of the 450-year-old book on alchemy that he says came from Isaac Newton's library, he knows he's got something exceptional. Do you know who Isaac Newton was? He said everything goes up and must come down. Of course, the old man enlisted the help of rare books specialist Gary, who confirmed that it is a book from the famed Thinker's Collection. This book was owned by Isaac Newton. Ah, great. Despite the fact that the cover had been restored and rebacked, quote, possibly in the 1700s. This is not the original binding. Uh, this book was restored. It was rebacked. This was repaired, probably done in the 1700s. Gary estimated the book's retail worth to be $20,000. Would retail, it, it has a value of $20,000. Just to put a bow on top of this plainly awful deal, it turns out much of the rest of Newton's book collection has either been destroyed or archived at Trinity College, Cambridge in England. Meaning in reality, this tome is actually a priceless piece of history. Well, people who come down to the gold and silver pawn shop are looking for their best interests. And when this got disclosed that they could get cheated down there, Rick kind of lost his credibility, like the gold melting was not enough. This news also started to rumble around our pawn stars. Tyrion Shekel. It's a shekel of Tyre, like from the Bible. The Tetra Drachma, or Tyrian Shekel, was a silver currency produced entire for the Roman Empire. Basically what you have is a really cool coin that is collectible because it's, you know, from Jerusalem, it's from the time of Christ. It was nearly entirely used to pay the Roman temple tax. The Tyrian Shekel gained a bad reputation as the coin used to pay Judas Iscariot due to its use in temple business. Judas received 30 pieces of silver to uh, basically drop a dime on Jesus. Um, <laughs> and it made its way down to our favorite pawn store thanks to a customer. A detective later came to the shop and informed them that the coin had been stolen not by the seller featured in the episode, but by a previous owner of the coin. An out-of-town detective is called Las Vegas Police. The shekel that you recently brought in, there's a chance it might be stolen. They want to put it on hold. Even after this, the Harrisons weren't allowed to keep it because the original owner had been compensated by his insurance policy. However, while they got lucky there, it turned out that Rick had overpaid for the coin. Despite its rarity, a well-preserved shekel of tire is normally only worth around $1,200. And because this one had been cleaned, it had lost a lot of its value. Therefore, the majority of the $1,600 Rick had spent for the coin is likely lost. Yeah, $1,600. Deal. Okay. Are right, you want to go write them up? No. Yeah. The Samurai Sword Steel. I got something for you. Oh, sweet, a ninja sword. No, that's a samurai sword. Same thing. The custom of manufacturing Japanese swords dates back centuries and is still practiced today. Each sword is handcrafted and can take up to 18 months to complete. Thousands of dollars can be spent on the blades that result. 
I think it's something that you probably would like to have. Look at this blade, all right? That's the real deal. It takes special people to do this, you know? Swords and weapons are a common sight in the pawn store. Do you mind if I open it up? Be very careful, though. It's pretty sharp. Particularly the ornate, uncommon and antique. Knowing this, a vendor wanted to make a tiny profit by trading a magnificent samurai sword to the shop. But the so-called Pawn Stars had other ideas. Oh, that's nice, man. Well, this is a Yatsuru sword made in about 1600. Okay. While Rick and his crew are normally fair, they were openly malevolent in their con on this unsuspecting merchant. The sword was sold for $1,500, but later valuations revealed it to be worth 10 times more. Any idea what you're looking to get out of it? $5,000. $1,500, bucks, my man. That's all I'm willing to risk. Deal. Deal? All right. Chum, you want to take care of him? Hell yeah. Ensuring that the seller felt crushing sorrow seep in and contaminate the joy he was experiencing while watching himself on television. I like to sell it because when my wife, when she's angry at me, she kind of looks at it. He not only lost a large sum of money, but his brief moment in the spotlight was also wrecked. Bummer. When he offered me 800 I was ready to jump and do a dance, but I had to keep my cool because the price was still going up. Bike Gang's Legal Defense. This one has nothing to do with the Pawn Stars show, but it was a rare occasion when someone managed to pull the wool over the old man's eyes. The famed reality personality once agreed to hold a party for members of the infamous Vargas Motorcycle Gang at his Las Vegas house, which he was linked to through his son, who also had a big time rap sheet. According to one story, the old man just believed he was donating his celebrity to a charitable cause so that a large number of people would attend and put money down to win numerous raffles. However, that purpose was an alleged slush fund to defray legal fees related with a big gang sweep in which 32 members were jailed for offenses ranging from gun and drug trafficking to robbery. Rick claimed the old man had no knowledge of any of it, although his claim was damaged slightly by an event banner that said, Pawn Stars Car Collection on Display, Celebrity Appearance by the Old Man. Yikes. Before we go on to the last part of our list, we'd love to hear your thoughts on today's video, as well as if you have any other favorite shows that you'd like to see on our channel. Wells Fargo Strongbox. I've had a ball and chain for 50 some years, son. <laughs> Don't talk about my mother that way. <laughs> As Americans traveled west in search of gold and land for settlement in the 1800s, a reliable delivery system evolved. Wells Fargo & Company was created in 1852 in San Francisco to meet this demand. Wells Fargo strong boxes were made of oak and pine, with iron straps for reinforcement. They were used to move money, silver, legal paperwork, checks, drafts, and bank letters via stagecoaches. Wells Fargo eventually grew to become the nation's first coast-to-coast -coast express delivery company, and by 1918, it reached 10,000 communities across the United States. During World War I, the nation's delivery routes were nationalized to support American efforts. All of this means you can get good money out of it, if you get your hands on a real one. And to make grain out of easy pawn, had Rick fooled this time? Well, the deal took place in season five, when a tough-looking man with a handlebar mustache arrived with a suitably formidable object, a Wells Fargo Strongbox. What do we have here? Well, we got a Wells Fargo Strongbox, an ancient ball and chain, and some handcuffs. The ball and chain were purportedly taken from Yuma Territorial Prison in 1876. And some antique ball and chain. Okay, you do have a ball and chain and a few old uh, handcuffs. And the handcuffs were taken from Folsom State Prison in California. It comes from Folsom Prison from around the late 1800s and 1900s. I know um, California did their hangings there. Rick, on the other hand, was quick to point out several historical inconsistencies as if you were a professional pawnbroker. But a uh, pretty notorious prison, same with uh, Yuma. They had all the bad guys. They were not a nice place to be. Rick ditched the handcuffs, but he couldn't say no to the box. Rick invested $450, which turned out to be a complete loss. I'll meet you in the middle of 450. All right. All right, yeah, all right. All right. pretty little filthy. Hey, thank you, sir. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> When the expert arrived, he stated that the box was a complete fantasy and that there was no way to make money out of this one.
This is a complete fantasy piece. It's a complete fake. Damn it, Rick. It's one of the most faked items. Thank you very much for watching the video. Do like and share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to not miss any of the upcoming amazing videos. Thank you once again.